decide what he needs to get it done and uh, just help me Lord to uh, invite people that uh, need the training Lord pray that you'll be with us tonight as we hear your word again in Jesus name I pray Amen. Amen well I want us to think about time management tonight redeeming the time you know, time is a precious commodity. You ever thought about that? Time is something we're going to be held accountable for by God. Every second, every minute, I wrote this down, every hour, every day, every week, every year is important. Time is either wasted or productive. People said about time. Winston Churchill said this Let our advanced worrying become advanced thinking and planning. Amen. John Ron said this Time is more valuable than money. You can get more money, but you cannot get more time. Amen. Shakespeare said this William Shakespeare. Better to be three hours too soon than a minute too late. That's for me tonight, Brother Arnold. Abraham Lincoln said this, Give me six hours to chop down a tree, and I will spend the first four sharpening the axe. Thoughts about time. Now, I want to think about time. I I want us to think about let, 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 since we're in church and since we're preaching the message, let's, let's, let's get a biblical, amen? A biblical basis of time management. What's the bi- biblical basis of time management, okay? I have 24 hours in a day, so many hours a week, and so many, you can count seconds and so forth, we have that. But, 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 but what's the biblical basis? What does God say about time? That's where we begin. Before we even make a schedule, decide what we're going to do, we need to make sure we have a biblical understanding of time. And, and that's important. That's important. I don't care whether you're, whether you're 10 or you're, you're, you're 70, whether you're working or retired, whatever. God, God we're going to give account of our time. And so a biblical basis is important. Notice The Bible says in Colossians chapter 4, Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5. Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5. Look at at what it says. Walk in wisdom toward them that that are without, redeeming the time. Redeeming the time. Now, what's the biblical requirement here? The biblical requirement is redeeming the time. It's a it's a it's a it's a command to rescue from loss, to take the best advantage of, and not to waste it. We are time wasters. We are time wasters. We waste our time doing things that do not matter. Now, I'm preaching to me. You're just a spectator tonight. <laughs> I need this message tonight. I uh I have a project that that has been delayed and delayed and delayed and 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 I've promised it by the end of February and uh and these guys come in here uh you know and, and I walk on site and I said, you know, you need to get some you need to get some uh something in your giddy up. You need to get you need to get this thing moving and get this done. And I called the guys, the owners. I said, you know, I want this done now. I've got a schedule. You know, you have the schedule. You, you, you need to get it done. And, uh, you know, you can be productive. You can be productive. In, in, a, in a construction situation, the, 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 the owner has given so much money for overhead and expense, uh, uh, for goods and services, for, for profit, you know, and, and if, if the labor number goes over what the labor number is, that cuts into the profit. And you know what happens? The boss is not happy. As a matter of fact, the big Fortune 500 guys 
they'll get a they'll get something that they're going to do and they'll take the profit out first and they'll say, okay, you guys, you do it for whatever's left over. That puts the pressure on them. Listen, listen, we 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 either produce or we don't produce. That's what's so that's what's so enjoyable about building and working in construction because you can see the production and you can see the the end product. We should get to the end of each day and look back on that day and see how God used us to produce and we used our time to be productive. The biblical reason, the biblical reason, look back there at Colossians chapter 4 and verse 5, it says, them that are without. This refers to people who need eternal life. Amen. Knowing not the Savior. And the context of this thing is not just our time, but it's our time, our time in sharing Christ with others. Listen, uh, I hear people all the time say, well, this is my ministry, this is my ministry, this is how I minister. I'll tell you something, this is how you minister right here. Amen. This is the guidebook. We don't, we don't decide how we're going to be a Christian. We don't decide whether, okay, I'm not going to tell people about Christ here, or I'm not going to witness here. You don't decide that. We, we, we are wasting our time, and we are, we, are, we are not redeeming our time if we're not sharing Christ with others. We are re- not redeeming our time if we're not giving out gospel tracts or inviting people to be saved or praying for God, uh, folks to be saved. Listen, it's important. It's important that we understand the context here. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15 says this, Redeeming the time because the days are evil. There's a biblical requirement, and there's a biblical there's a biblical reason, and then there's a biblical resolve. What is it? What's the resolve, preacher? It is this: walk in wisdom. That verse says, Colossians says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without. What's it mean to walk in wisdom? God's word is a source of wisdom. Amen. Amen. That's the source of wisdom. Listen. There's a, I, I've met a lot of people that know a lot about the Bible, more than me. I mean, they know every story. They know who's brother, cousin, second cousin, first cousin. They know. I mean, they can, they can just go down. You just. But it's not how much you know. It's what you do with what you know. Amen. It's what you do with what you know. I've seen guys with real expensive hammers. And they pull them out of their toolbox and it takes about five times before they hit the nail on the head. I've seen guys with hammers look like you need to throw it in the trash, and they hit it right on, right on time, drive that, drive that thing home. <laughs> you say, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? You make, it, you make it count. You make what you know to do count. See, see, we don't have any problem as Christians today with all the outlets and all the opportunities we have to know. Amen. Amen. I mean, come on. You got your phone on your. Fa- you got your phone, and you got you on my phone. Y'all, y'all remember? Y'all gave me that logos. That you gave me that logos. I, I, I got, I got on my computer. I got on this too. I can sit there. I can sit here in the middle of a message, and if I'm have stumped or something, I can call something up on this if I want to. I mean, I mean. It's, I got the Bible on there. You can Google it. You can Google it. You can ask, what's her name? Siri. You can ask Siri. She doesn't know anything, but you can ask her. You ever said anything mean to Siri? Yes. She said, that's not nice. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> but we have the opportunity. We have a lot of knowledge. Now, I'm not talking about... I'm not talking about knowledge you get from the world. I'm talking about the opportunity to get this, this book right here. This is knowledge. Amen. And so, so listen, listen. the biblical uh, basis of time management, that there's a requirement redeeming the time. The biblical reason, them that are without, the biblical resolve, walk in wisdom. But notice this, the biblical re- rebuke. The biblical rebuke. All the goals and lists and schedules and, 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 and seminars on... On time management, uh, don't do it unless we do it. Unless we get up and go. And here's a biblical rebuke. Look at Proverbs chapter 21. Proverbs chapter 21. 
Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 25 and 26. Proverbs 21 and verse 20, 20, 25 and 26. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He covereth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. Look at chapter 26 and verse 13. Chapter 26 of Proverbs and verse 13. says, the slothful man saith, there's a lion in the way, a lion is in the streets. As the door turneth upon his hinges, so doth the slothful upon his bed. The slothful hideth his hand in the, his bosom, it grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. The sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. The slothful man. Look back to chapter six and verse what's that, nine. What's that saying? What's that saying? It's saying a. It's saying the slothful man. He he just lays around, does nothing. Right. Won't even raise his hand to his mouth. It's pretty bad, isn't it? That's bad. Feed me. Yeah, feed me. I'm entitled. Notice notice verse nine of chapter six. Look what it says. Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Okay. God says, look at the ant, lazy person. <laughs> Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O oh, oh sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little uh, sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep, so shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and thy want as an armed man. You see, folks, there's a biblical basis of time management. And the Bible also tells us if you're lazy, you're a sluggard. If you're lazy, you'll get nothing done. If you're lazy, that's not what God wants. You don't work, you don't eat. Right. You don't you, you you work eight hours for eight hours pay. That's the way it is. And so the biblical basis of time management it's it's important that we manage our time. It's a biblical basis. Now, the there's a pressing the second thing I want you to think about is a pressing priority of time. There's a pressing priority of time. It's important that we make time a priority. Americans, um, America's changing. Uh, uh, America's changing society. So, what are you talking about, preacher? Well, longer work hours. The average worker works forty-six point eight hours a week. Professional workers, 52.2 hours a week. Small business operator, 51.3 hours a week. Leisure hours, 16.2 hours a week. Working mothers, 65% of mothers with children under 18 work outside the home. 56% of mothers with preschool children work outside the home. The result of this is added stress trying to keep work and family life in balance. Extra activities, school and community functions, church and certain ministries, recreation and clubs, family and, and get-togethers. There's a there's a there's there's a changing there's a changing priority of time management. There's a changing priority of time management. Now the basis the basis of God the basis of of time time management is is it must be biblical in a Christian. And 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 we there there is important that there an imp importance of of the pr pressing priority of time management because of the way the America's we can't we cannot be fashioned by the way America does it. Amen. Now, let me give you some tips tonight. Let me give you some timely tips 
of time management. Number one, the word decision comes to mind. What are you talking about? Well, you've got to decide. You've got to establish your purpose. What, what, what am I going to accomplish? How am I going to accomplish this? You must decide what to be and before deciding, before you're deciding what you're going to do. You say, put that in another sentence. What does God want me to do, be? What does God want me to be? Remember when you were little and you say, I'm, when I grow up, I'm going to be a, right? We all had those dreams. But here, as a Christian, we must ask God, what does God want me to be? Okay. And, and you look in the Old Testament many times, there were, there, were, there, were, there were men studying to be priests, and God says, no, you're going to be a prophet. Wow. Did they waste their time? No. But they changed their direction. God reaches down to Moses and says, Moses is chilling in the palace, and he says, yeah, you're going you're gonna to lead the children of Israel. Really? I don't even know how to talk. Well, I'll give somebody to speak for you. Next excuse. So you have to decide. And God took him out on the backside of the desert. For how many years? That's a long time for college. That's a long time. 40 years. 40 years. I mean, come on. That's a long time. I don't care. You can slice it, dice it, puree it. It's still, it's, it's still, it's still, it's still a long time. Here, here, now, now, listen, listen. Unless you have some sort of goal or mission statement, you're gonna, you're gonna miss it. And setting a goal, you've got to be specific. You've got to, you, you, you got to measure. You've got to uh, 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 have something achievable. You've got to have something realistic. You have to have something. Uh, you have to have uh, plan your time. That's the word smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time. You've got to you've got to set those goals. God is interested in who you are and what you do. Do you think Jesus? There was a plan for Jesus. Yeah. How long was his, was his public ministry? Three years. Started at what, what age? 30. Three years. Three years. That was the plan. That was the plan. Three years. That was God's plan. See? And so, who am I? What am I? And how am I going to get there? That's got, I've got to establish that purpose. Number, num, again, timely tip number two, designate. Establish your priorities. Now, there are priorities in our, in our life. Right? For most of us. You know, it's, it, you know for, for the... For the fa- uh, for man, it's for uh, a lot of fellas. It's, 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 it's God. It's family. It's church. It's work. Right. And how do you how do you how do you prioritize them? You say, preacher. Well, I juggle them. That's not what the Bible says. It doesn't say juggle them. It says to prioritize. You know why? You know why? You know why this building isn't packed on Sunday morning and Wednesday night, and there's no chairs because it's not a priority. Right, right. It's got to be a priority. Right. And, and, and it's important. So, so establish the priorities. The, the key is before you effectively make a schedule of your diff, different tasks each day. 
You've got to break down. Break it down. How, how, how long am I going to sleep? How long am I going to work? How long am I going to commute? Uh, commute? How, how, how about time for hygiene? How about time for other? What you, You've got to break it down. Have you ever sat down and made a schedule? Have you ever sat down and really made a schedule? Have you ever sat down and made a schedule and said, God, is this okay? That's convicting. Right. That's convicting. Because, because a lot of us leave, e e even faithful Christians leave God out of it. There's, there's, here's the priority breakdown. God, family, vocation, ministry, self. You say, well, preacher, you know, ministry is down there a little bit. Listen, God established the family. Amen. God established family. God says you provide for your family. Amen. God says you need to be in church and you need to you need to minister. Amen. Uh, but but let, let me just say let me just say, don't use your family as a reason not to be in church, mm -hmm. or not to not to do do God's will. Amen. Don't use your use your job as a reason not to be with your family. You're right. Uh, there's, there's a lot of people. A lot of people work, 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 work. Why? They don't want to go home. It's true. See. They don't want to go home, and so so the time management is important. Listen, the satisfaction we get in life comes from a small wedge of time called other. A time when we get alone by ourselves. A time that we. <coughs> are not working, we're not with anybody, and, and it's family time, devotional time, things that we can do, hobbies. But the priority breakdown is God, family, vocation, ministry, and self. Now, he, and the Chris, Christian has been against, given spiritual gifts, talents, and they, they, they are to be used. They are to be used. And, 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 and the talents that God gives us are to be used for God. Why? Uh, because of our relationship to God. Amen. Why? Because our responsibility of God. Because, why? Because there's going to be a reckoning with God. Why? Because there's going to be a rejection of God by God. Of things that we shouldn't have done. Things that were wood, hay, stubble. And so, so, so we, know, we must not only make a decision, we must designate. We must designate, establish the priorities. And then another thought is this, discipline. Now, I'm going to tell you something. It's easy to write a plan down. I've done that before. I've written a plan down before. But to stick to the plan, I mean, it is tough. It's tough. Because what, what happens the first day, especially if you're a Christian and you want to please God, Satan is going to hum in on you. He's going to throw some stuff at your, your way. How many of you have ever made a plan and, and got none of it done in a day? All of us. Well, it was either, either God was teaching us something or it was a wrong plan. Right? Think about it. Now, 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 God, God wants us to be productive. And so it means to establish your plan, discipline. After determining the purpose in life and after deciding your priorities, the next step is the, the plan of action. Begin with a to-do list. To-do list. Anybody? Anybody ever heard of the to-do list? To-do list. Many men call it the honey-do list. <laughs> but to-do list, the to-do list. Uh, people to see, things to be done, activities to be planned, calls to make, letters to write, items to obtain, places to go, other. But you've got a list of things. What is my to-do list? What's your to-do list for tomorrow? Well, you better make one because you won't get anything done. Right. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, preacher, you got to understand something. 
I have a job and I go to that job and they tell me what to do. No, even at your job, you should have a to-do list. Right. See, Christian, the Christian should be the most valuable employee at any place. We should be valuable. You know, when, 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 I, when, when I work a job, I try to learn it to the place that I get ahead. But I, I started one of my first jobs, besides being a paper boy, was was uh, working with a brick mason. And the first day I was working with a brick mason, it was mud, and so he said, "Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to set two by fours up, and you roll the roll the mortar on the two by four while you're trying to stand up in the mud." You know, Maryland clay mud. And uh, so that was that was a day to remember. But then there were other days, and, and, and I had two bricklayers that were laying just as quick as it could go. But then I learned, and I got smart, and I learned to stay ahead. You know what happened when I was ahead? I picked up a trowel and started laying brick. So I was not only a laborer, I was becoming a bricklayer. See? Learn to lay block. Learn to set a corner. Say, what's setting a corner? That's how you get the, that's what they first do. They set the corners before they, if you go to, go to see their relaying block, they ha, you see the corners. You say, well, what are they doing? Well, they're getting the, the building square. You don't want a snake. You want it straight, right? And, and so that's, that's the way it works. You learn your job. Uh, you, you say, you say, where'd my manager come from? Probably from where you stand right now. The boss. The boss is the person that knows how to do all the jobs, supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. And so it's important that we do that. So you make a schedule. You, you, you make a schedule, things that you need to accomplish. Okay? And so that's what you have to do or, 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 or nothing. You got a to-do list. And then the priorities. Choose the activities that receive, receive your time, energy, and resources. Now, here's what I say about a priority. I've got, if I don't do any of the others, I've got to get this done. So it comes first and gets all my attention. attention. You say, well, preacher, you know, it may take the whole day. Well, it may do that, but you get that done because it's a priority. If it's a priority, the others can wait. You understand? It's important. Listen, it's amazing how many people have no priorities. Nothing is important. Nothing is important. Listen, listen. Uh, you say, does God have priorities? Yes, you are his priority. Priorities, they choose activities which you'll receive... Uh, the, this forces you to make a decision. It reduces stress, causes you to choose between two or more activities, helps you to decide uh, what can be designated to, uh, or delegated to others. This forces you to, to say no to certain things you don't have time for. There's a lot of things we don't have time for that we do that, make, that, 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 that get us discombobulated in trying to accomplish the priority. Here's a good one. Make a weekly schedule. Make a weekly schedule. Huh? What's a weekly schedule? See, 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 here's here's what most of us are doing. Somebody else is making a schedule for us. Right. Somebody else is making a schedule for us. Now over the Christmas holidays at our job, we had our job, we had things roughed in and some things done at the job at that at the building, and it was a cement, it was a it was a floor that needed it needed to have a flooring. Anybody ever seen these indoor outdoor? They throw flakes down and put acrylic 
It's the clear stuff over top of them. Okay. But, but it can't freeze. And I don't know if you know this, but it's cold outside. So what did you do, preacher? Well, here's what I did. I got one of my subcontractors to put a plastic envelope around the building. I ordered a heater and I ordered a generator. And over the holidays, over the holidays, uh, um, the, week, the week before Christmas and the days after Christmas, they did, they did the floor. Now, why did you choose that? Well, nobody wants to work those two weeks anyway. But those, those flooring guys did. And so they got it done. Now it's done. And everybody's back in. And, and, and the government official walked up to me and said, you know, that was ingenious. And I thought to myself, man, you haven't seen much then. <laughs> I mean, because, because it may, well, to, to some people say, wow. A lot of people say, wow. But to me, I thought, I thought a month before, I said, okay, what do I got to do to get this done? And I planned it. Because why? It was a priority. Do you understand what I'm saying? I got to turn that building over at the end of February. I've promised it to those people. It's a dog kennel. They want dogs put in that place. They want to, they got cat condos in there and all kinds of crazy things. <laughs> and, uh, and we've got to have it ready for them. We've got to have it powered up. And, and you say, well, you do. it's priorities and you've got to plan it. I've got a schedule. I make, I've got a schedule on a computer that I make. It's a timeline. And it's got, it's got their time, and it's got when they're supposed to start and when they're supposed to be done. When they're supposed to start, when, and who's, who comes before this person, who comes after this, and we're going to be done here. Now, do I just put that schedule out there, and it just happens by itself? No, I've got to stay on it. You see, folks, God, God, whether you, whether you acknowledge it or not or have thought about it or not, God has the ultimate plan. Do you understand that? Do you understand that God made prophecies throughout the Old Testament history and all prophecies have come to pass up to the point that he comes back? There's nothing that has to happen before Jesus comes back to get us in the clouds. Wow. Nothing. Nothing. Not a thing. The only thing that has to happen is the Father needs, says to Jesus, Go get him. That's his plan. I've heard people saying, you know, I study prophecy. I've heard people say, well, you know, when we're out of here, everything just goes haywire. No. Things happen, but they're his plan. You say, how do you know? He's already prophesied it in the Bible. Right. And it's going to take place. It's going to take place. Now, let me finish up and give you a couple things. Number one, in conclusion... You need to have the proper, proper principle in life, and 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 there's 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 there's, there's key words, key words in, in in this principle, and the key words are teach and number. Teach and number. You need to teach yourself to prioritize. Teach yourself to be disciplined. You need to learn. And then number. Number. Prioritize. What's important? Your conversation is important. What have I done for Christ? Your character Becoming like Christ. Your, your conduct. What have you done for Christ? And then have the proper purpose in life. Not just the principle, but the proper purpose in life. The key words. The key words. Let me, let me, get, you to, let me look, get you to look at Ecclesiastes chapter 9 and verse 10.
Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Nine and verse ten. You got it, Darian? Yes, sir. What's it say? Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with all thy do it with thy might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave whither thou goest. You see, it's important that we understand that. Tomorrow's too late. Tomorrow's too late. Whatever your hand finds, finds to do, do it with your might. Amen. Time management. It's a biblical principle. Accomplish with God. Don't accomplish for God. Accomplish with God. Walk each day with Him. Establish your spiritual going first. And go where God wants you to go. There are some times that you don't know what the priority, you don't know what to do. There are situations you get in, you don't know what to do. Seek God. Seek godly advice. And when in doubt, don't. When in doubt, don't. Some people say, well, you just got to do something. No, you don't. I think the Bible says, wait on the Lord. Wait, I say. Amen. On the Lord. It's important. Time management. How much can I squeeze? I remember I've given this, this illustration a hundred times. I used to go to elementary school and my mother would cut my orange in fours and I'd stick it in my mouth, you know, and smile with a big orange in it and then chew, chew the pulp and all that stuff. But some guys took, it was, the orange was whole and they'd take and cut a hole up in there and they'd squeeze that thing till it was just nothing. They'd get every bit of juice out of it they could. And that's what we ought to do with each day. Squeeze everything we can out of it. For God. Amen. And with God. Amen? Amen. Now my challenge to you is this. Ask yourself today, tonight, who am I? What does God want for me? What does God want for me? And then everything else is arranged around that. Everything else is arranged around that. What does God want for me? And arrange everything else around that. Plan, prioritize, be disciplined, You get to the end of the day, my motto is this, do your best and hang the rest. Do your best today, hang it up, rest, and restart tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father, bless as we do business with you. I pray that our time would be managed correctly properly we can accomplish what we need to for you lord it's amazing how you can use a person if they'll be yielded to you in the principle of time we know one day that time will end we won't need watches and we don't need clocks and we don't need whistles or timers because we'll be spending eternity with you and bless as we do business with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand with heads bowed and eyes closed. If God spoke to your heart, you come.
Amen. Amen. Well, let's close in prayer. Good to see you. Darian, close for us in prayer. Lord, thank you for that wonderful message, Lord, about time management. Lord, help us to think about that and act that out tomorrow. Be with uh, everyone in attendance here. Help us to get home safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.